All right, welcome back. I'm amazed you made it to uh, examples part two for three more examples. And I've just noticed that two of these are the same. One moment. All right, there we go. With three more examples to integrate by substitution. That was much better. Here we have a sort of a terrible trig trio if there's three terms in there. Um, and straight away, I would have no idea how to do this if I wasn't sort of in the context of an integration method like integration by parts or integration by substitution. So thinking about this, looking ahead, what is, so I've got tan cubed. Remember, this means tan theta, that's one, and then sec theta twice. So there's a whole lot of terms here. So without expanding that and trying to do 17 iterations of the product rule, how can I tackle this? So if I think about integrating, I'm immediately going to go to my derivative. So if I differentiate tangent, I'm going to get secant squared, right? So recall derivative, I wrote t, this is theta of tan theta equals secant squared of theta. So that's actually quite nice. If I have a derivative, then I get secant squared and there it is right in my question. So let's not look any further. Let's take tangent by itself. Now I don't want to take tangent cubed because then I would have something like as a derivative, three tan squared, and then I would have the derivative of tangent, which then is secant squared theta. And in my substitution, um, I don't want to make things sort of more complex than they need to be. So I'm just going to try this one first. So I will say let, let's go back to u equal tan theta. So du equals secant squared theta d theta. And then I'm isolating for d theta to try to replace in my equation. So d theta equals du over secant squared of theta. And now we see that that secant squared is going to very conveniently drop out. So my integral now looks like eight. Instead of tangent cubed, remember you could write this as tan theta all cubed with three like this. So this is going to be u cubed. So there's my substituted variable. It's going to be cubed secant squared, this one hasn't changed. And then instead of d theta, I'm going to write my substituted term. So this is du by secant squared. So a little bit of work to get us started there, but look at this, secant squared drops out and my integral should be a lot easier now. So I have eight u cubed du. So go ahead and use the power rule to integrate this and sub back into the original variable. I'll do the same. And there we have it. We could go ahead and do a derivative here to check. And so the exponent four, the degree four would come down in front and that's where you get the four times two equals eight. So then we have four tan theta cubed. And so that's where we get the eight and that's also where we get the cubed. And then your chain rule would say the derivative just of tangent, which would be here. And that would be your secant squared term. So I won't write that down, but you can go back and confirm that those are equivalent. All right, e to the x over e to the x plus pi. I saw one of these earlier where 
I might be tempted to try to simplify like e to the x over the e to the x can simplify to one or something. But because of this addition in here, remember your bed meds, we can't undo this by any sort of clever um, algebra and cancellation there. So we need to think of another way around this. So we could replace e to the x. Let's say e to the x repla is replaced with u. Um, but then do we also replace this e to the x with u? And then I have an integral of u over u plus pi. I would replace my dx and I would end up with a du over e to the x. We'll go through this in a second. Uh, and then I'm still kind of stuck with this e to the x. So that doesn't seem to be any good. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm just going to rewrite this as e to the x and then times 1 over e to the x plus pi and then dx. So I'm just going to try to separate it into two terms. And now let's get to my substitution. So u equals e to the x and here well you could actually do the whole denominator e to the x plus pi and then I would have 1 over u as my integral I still have e to the x here and instead of dx what do I get so let's keep going du uh, pi is just a number, so that differentiates to zero. So I get e to the x dx, and then dx isolated is going to be du over e to the x. So when I replace this, I get du over e to the x. And now this actually looks promising, right? Taking that whole denominator. So this e to the x cancels with that one. Now let's simplify this integral, keep my equality signs. So my new integral is one over u du. And so by doing it this way, I didn't get tripped up with which e to the x I was replacing because I took the whole denominator of the equation. And it looks like I'm okay, let's keep going. So this integral, so remember you cannot use power rule here. This is a special case. So one over the variable, this integrates to the natural log of u plus c. And then when I sub back in, I'm going to have natural log e to the x, oops, I forgot my pi, e to the x plus pi, and that's key, I need that plus pi plus pi and then plus c. And that should wrap up my integral. Thinking ahead to differentiate and check, you'll say, well, hang on, where does this extra e to the x come from? Well, that's when you take the derivative. Afterwards, you have to take the derivative of the argument of the log function. And so that derivative is an extra e to the x from the chain rule. So that's where that term comes from. Okay, my last one here. Where do you want to substitute? So we have a square root and we have a 2x minus 1 as the argument of that square root. So let's go straight to the substitution. Let's let, and let's use a different letter. Let's use alpha equal 2x minus 1. So I won't take the root with it. I'll just take the argument. So d alpha equals 2 dx and then dx by itself equals d alpha over 2. Alpha might not have been the best letter to pick, but that's where we are, so let's see how we go. Okay, so my new integral, keep my limits, 
going to be 1 over square root of alpha. And then instead of dx, I have d alpha by 2. So that 2 doesn't really phase me too much. I can actually bring the 1 half out front as a constant. And then I just have 1 over root alpha, which is the same as alpha. And then what's the exponent here? It's a 1 half, but negative. So moving along, I get alpha to the 1 half divided by 1 half, evaluate at 5, and then subtract evaluation at 1. So that is my integral. Now, I could keep going here, but remember that this 5 and this 1 came from my original equation. And the original integral says that these numbers are actually x equals 5. So that is x equals 5, and the lower limit is x equals 1. So I need to either convert those limits, or I need to sub back to my original um, variable, which is x. So before I move on, I need to sub back. So 1 half, and instead of alpha, I have 2x minus 1 and divided by a half is the same as multiply by 2. So maybe I'll just pop that up there over 1, 5, and 1. All right, let's sub in some numbers and see what we get. So I'll sub in 5 first. So I'm going to get square root 2 times 5 minus 1 subtract square root 2 times 1 minus 1. So I left out my constant here for a definite integral. We don't have a plus c. So this is 10 minus 1, so root 9 is 3. And I have 2 minus 1, so root 1 is 1. So 3 minus 1 equals exactly 2. So I'll just make this note here about the 5 and the 1 about subbing back to my original variable. All right, I hope that gives you a good grounding for integration by substitution. Next up, we have another strategy, integration by parts.